Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, this is Kaga. Well, today's gonna be one of those times where we take to the skies in War Thunder. Yes, we just uh, had all of our daily fill of, uh, not daily, weekly fill of warships for a bit here, so let's take to the skies. The aircraft in front of you is the Ki-61 Ihei. It is one of those um, tier 3 Japanese uh, fighters. In particular, this is the one that excels at, well, it doesn't really excel in the same respect like the P-47 does in this, but it does, it's the better of the diving, boom and zoom type fighters of the Japanese um, like tech tree, if you will. And one of the things that differentiates this dive fighter over some of the other ones like the B-47, now what's another great one? Some of the, um, I think the, the Yaks, Kind of function in the similarly to the that this in the fact that whereas you have the pure dive fighter where you build up all this energy in in altitude you dump it all into one single attack you try to make that kill and then you boom you zoom you get out of dodge as quickly as possible the ki-61 is one of those weird fighters where it it can do this it can do it quite fine but it's also equally capable of putting up a very aggressive turns you know with uh, a liberal use of flap and engine control it can pull off some pretty nice maneuvers that you wouldn't expect a lot of turn fighters to do or a lot of um, ascending um, strike fighters like the um, arrow cobras like the one you just saw pass by and it's just a matter of it gives it that X factor, I, I guess you might want to call. Well, maybe you don't want to call it X factor. Um, we'll call it something. Um, it's just that little mystery element that you don't know when you're fighting one of these whether that the pilot will do the boom and zoom or dive out to get the distance or try to turn fight with you. And I have to admit, it maybe it's not as good as like a P-51 and like a rolling scissors type of engagement, but you know what? It doesn't need to be. It it's kinda of, the KI sixty ones are kind of like a Swiss Army knife of mid rank um, Japanese aviation, you know? It, it it's that's part of the reason I love them. Well the other reason is the fact they've got these glorious uh, twenty millimeter cannons that just seem to shred everything in all creation. So you just saw me down that uh, enemy fighter fairly quickly with those cannons. And right now I'm climbing up to meet this uh, G5N that is a, I believe that is a uh, tier 4 Japanese bomb, heavy bomber. I'm kind of, I, I guess I'm just kind of blanking out right now. It's been a while since I really studied the uh, tech trees in War Thunder a little closely because, uh, especially for the bombers, because... You know, I'm in there f purely for the fighters. The bombers just don't really interest me. I played up to, um, I think it was the first one in uh, Tier 3 and said, this really isn't as much fun as me playing the fighters. Um, specifically, I think I'd, and that's why I chose to go with the um, B7A2. It's a fun cr aircraft because it has those cannons. Everyone loves cannons, right? Everything must bristle with cannons for us to be happy. Okay, so, yeah, we've got that P-39Q there with some nice sneaky um, stealth fire from the front. He burns out, and we pick up the kill. So that was one of those moments where we needed to disengage to make certain our six was clear. And now we're going to see if we can get back up there and give a piece of the good news to this G5N because, you know what? I really don't like uh, bombers bombing out my bases. It makes me feel very unhappy. And now you're probably sitting there wondering, why am I using all this time to build the altitude? And you know, regardless of whether I can actually catch up to this bomber or not, and if he's a good bomber pilot, I will not, because I'm climbing up to meet him. Um, or if I, I have to disengage to um, save my own skin. Uh, having this altitude is a good thing in the Ki-61. It's one of the uh, historically accurate um, traits about this particular fighter is that it has 
the ability to build speed in a dive that prior to the KI-61, when you're used to like KI-43 or any of the Zero slash Ray Sen models that you just don't have. And it's one of those, it, it, admittedly, when I first got the, ver the first of the KI-61s, I didn't quite appreciate how good of a dive fighter it really could be. So I didn't really enjoy it as much. And you know, partly because it had the, that 7.7 .7 and 12.7 millimeter gun combo instead of the 12.7 and 20 millimeter gun combo on that you first get on the Ihe. So, and it really comes down to is I have thus, thus learned that one of the better ways to approach that battle spread from 4.3 to 5.7 is gain altitude. Energy in a fight is victory in a fight. And that P63 ran out of energy and I smashed him for it. So right now I'm going to put the plane down here into a little bit of a dive and the reason is is I need to build up that airspeed. One of the things that you need to be conscious of in mid BR is being able to start equating energy, airspeed, and altitude and figuring out how to use them in your engagements. At least I find that when I'm playing this game and actually conscious of maintaining those quantities in my head, I do much, much better. And as you can see, there are moments where even when I'm thinking about it, I'm not thinking about it all the time. As you see me pull these, that weird Immelman to uh, get up there and try to close the distance on this heavy bomber. Now, should I be doing this? You know, I'm almost at 6.6 .6 kilometer, um, almost, I'm above 6.6 .6 kilometers above the Earth's surface, and now it's time to, as I can see, we don't have any more bases. That bomber pilot's trying to get out of Dodge. He sees that I'm trying to latch onto him. He's getting high, and he's burning the in, probably burning his uh, wep to open up the distance on me. So it's at this point, more or less, that you got to sit down and evaluate where you are on the map, and whether you'll actually catch up to this bomber. Is it worth trying to keep going forward? As I'm now realizing that I'm not going to catch him, I cannot get the extra altitude in time to make this point, I need to spend some time regaining airspeed so I can maximize the fact that now I'm at 7 kilometers above the uh, surface of the Earth and War Thunder and I can actually I'm probably about 5 kilometers above any other pilot except this bomber pilot. So there are ways we can make use of this and right now it's evaluating where are the opportunities and in arcade battles, you have this handy tool called the minimap. So you can sit back and evaluate where the little red dots are flying in the sky, and evaluate where you need to turn, when you need to turn, the rough attitude that you uh, need to be at, and then you can evaluate whether or not you need to start your dive. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at the concentrations, and I'm deciding to pick out this. Um, these two back here for the moment because they do not represent a as much of a threat to me if I were to boom and zoom and you're about to see yes we're raking about 860 kilometers per hour in this dive which is good this is all about getting that air speed up we're going to pick him up I'm gonna latch onto this BF 109 Gonna try to pick him up as well. We get the kill. Okay, that's uh, I, th I don't feel like pushing my luck too much. So let's open up the distance, use that that airspeed, and transform that back into some height. Now, granted, you will never get 100% conversion from altitude into airspeed and from airspeed into altitude because you know <laughs> there's something called air resistance. So you might spend all that time to go through that dive and then once you are clear of that, you go ahead, you pull up, you might get like about 
25% of that altitude back if you're not turning. Turning, of course, reduces that. Anyway, it looks like we couldn't pick up that last kill. I hope today's video was interesting for you all. A little bit of a excursion from the sea surface uh, is a nice departure once in a while. Uh, hope to see you around the channel a bit more often. Please consider subscribing. And I'll see you around in the future. Thank you, and good day.